the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen. My grace is sufficient for thee, for power is made perfect in infirmity. Gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Words from this morning's epistle, Miss Feria, after Sexagesima Sunday. This line from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians is rather important for all of us because it tells us just how we are to advance in the spiritual life. It tells us how we are to overcome ourselves. It tells us how we are to grow in virtue and overcome our sins. All of our weaknesses, even our sins, are opportunities for God's grace to shine through them. With our sins, through the grace of repentance, the firm purpose of amendment, acts of reparation, all which are made possible through the grace of God, God's grace, God's power is made manifest. St. Thomas tells us that the moral miracles, conversion of souls, are greater than the physical miracles. So raising from death to life spiritually is greater than raising a dead body to life. This is a glory of God's power, for it's only by God's power that this is possible. So give God your sins. Make a good confession. When we fall into some sin, immediately ask God's pardon and ask him the grace to do better the next time. This is how we will glory in our infirmities and allow the strength of Christ to dwell in us. Then there's our daily weaknesses, our failures, and our good resolutions, our stumbles along the path, along the way of the cross. We have to remember our Lord himself allowed himself to feel the full weight of the cross, allowed his weakness to shine through on the way of the cross, falling three times, giving up everything on the cross to show us his love. Through the weakness of the cross, the glory of the love of God is made manifest. We must give Christ our weaknesses. We must go to him in our weaknesses. So often when we think of our weaknesses and our failures and our inability to keep our good resolutions, etc., we see them as an obstacle to our spiritual life. But actually our Lord's trying to teach us something. He's trying to teach us that without me you can do nothing. He's trying to teach us that we need him in everything. We fall into an error, an error where we confuse the natural life with the spiritual life. As we grow in our natural life, the expectation is that we can become independent. Move out of your parents' house, get a job, be productive, get on with your life, do something. And if we don't do that, we're failures. Now, yes, we have to grow up and mature and move out of our parents' basement and get a job and be a contributing member of society and not play video games in my parents' basement for the rest of my life, right? There's too many like that. In the spiritual life, though, as we advance, we actually rely upon God more. There never comes a point where it's like, well, I've said my prayers, I've done my mortification, I have all these virtues, I'm good to go. I've got it all figured out. That's not the way it works. The more we advance, the more we have to rely upon our Heavenly Father more and more and more and more and more until we rely upon Him for everything in every element of our lives. And the different purifications are for this very purpose. 
to make us realize, not just in word, but in truth, in our actions, the way we see the world, without Christ, I can do nothing. And not only that, I don't want to do anything without Christ. That is the disposition that is necessary for us. It's a total dying to self. Where we no longer rely upon ourselves, but we rely upon Christ and everything to give us the strength we need to do what we need to do day in and day out. And then, and only then, will the strength of Christ dwell within us. Only then will God's strength will be made manifest in our weakness and the glory of God's almighty power will be made manifest to the world through our weakness. But we must give it to God in order for this to take place. And that takes humility. That humility which is based on the truth that God is God and I am not. And without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I would not even exist. And so let us ask Our Lady, the humble handmaid of the Lord, who gave everything to our Lord and allowed our Lord to work through her, allowed God's grace to shine forth in her, God's strength to shine forth in her as a perfect vessel of the strength and power of God, a perfect vessel of his grace, and she will help us to die to self and to glory in our infirmities, our weaknesses, give them to God so that God's strength can be made manifest in each and every one of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.